Hello and welcome to Take Time. I'm your host, Patrick Marlat, and today we're talking about Monta's most recent additions, The Ocean King and Sky Quest. Now, this comparative analysis isn't to say which one of these two watches you should buy. On the contrary, I wanted to highlight the similarities and differences between these two watches to help you better choose your first or next Monta watch. Special thanks to Monta for sending these prototype watches my way for this video. These watches have been around the world on promotion, so getting to have them in for this comparative analysis for you guys has been a real treat. So thank you so much for sending these my way. Today we're gonna compare, contrast, and I will let you know which of these two models I would personally choose in case you are looking to pick up one of these models over the other. I do hope my opinions here today help you better assess which one to acquire. Now let's first start off by talking about how these two watches contrast from one another. Uh, the obvious thing being that this has three time zones you can measure, one with the bezel insert, one with the 24-hour GMT hand, and of course your local time with the main hour and minute hand, while the Ocean King only features the one time zone. Now with that obvious difference out of the way, the next point of contrast I'd like to mention is actually on the Ocean King's bracelet. Now, while this clasp looks very similar to what you might find on the Triumph and Sky Quest, it features a glide lock system that, right here on the back, allows you to make micro adjustments on the fly to better fit this bracelet onto your wrist. Now, currently, this system isn't in place for the Sky Quest or Triumph line, and it's a shame. I know that's been a point of contention for a lot of fans of the brand. They would like to see this throughout the entire lineup. Now, I can't say whether they're going to do that or not, but do note it is only featured on the Ocean King bracelet. However, it's important to note that these two cases actually share the same dimensions. So if you were to buy the Ocean King on the bracelet and happen to have also purchased the Sky Quest, you can actually transfer the bracelet from the Ocean King onto the Sky Quest and get the best of both worlds that way. If you were in the market and needed a GMT and you wanted a more casual diver. Also the same goes for the rubber strap here. Any strap or bracelet option you choose with either one of these watches will work on the other body. The Ocean King features a 60 click unidirectional bezel and just like the Ocean King Mark I before it, it's very deliberate. It lands right on the spot it's intended to with no wobble whatsoever. It's certainly best in class so far as divers are concerned. I've really enjoyed the action on this particular bezel. While the SkyQuest features a 72-click bidirectional bezel that is just as deliberate as the Ocean King's and great for tracking a second or third time zone on your SkyQuest. Both the bezel inserts featured on these black and gilt dials are ceramic. The Ocean King has three bezel insert options and four dial face options. You have a black and blue ceramic insert as well as a steel insert. You also have a black, black and gilt blue and wet blue dial tone. Do note that the bezel inserts aren't a la carte. They are paired with certain dial face options. If you'd like to see what those are, I'd recommend you go to their site. Now our SkyQuest only comes with two bezel options being black and steel with black, gilt black, and blue dial options. Now I'll state that on their website, the blue tone of the SkyQuest option that's paired with the steel bezel insert looks very similar to the wet blue of the Ocean King. I don't know if those two tones are going to look the same in person. I haven't seen them, but that is something to note if you are interested in getting a softer tone of blue that was featured on the SkyQuest as well. Now the last major contrasting point I'd like to mention about these two watches is that the SkyQuest will feature a Sapphire Crystal Exhibition case back showcasing the Salita SW330 that's housed inside, while the Ocean King will feature a stainless steel case back housing the Salita SW300 inside. Now aside from the different packages and aforementioned features, these two watches are extremely similar to one another. As a matter of fact, they're nearly identical in form. Both feature a 304 meter water resistant case with screw down crown at the three o'clock position. Both have a sapphire top crystal with seven layers of anti-reflective coating on the inside, as well as a date window displayed at the six o'clock position. Both watches feature hacking and hand winding on the movement with a central seconds hand, a 28800 beats per hour movement with a 42 hour power reserve. 
Again, the main difference being the added function of the GMT hand on the SW330 as opposed to the 300. Also note that neither of these options come currently with a leather strap. You have to purchase them on either a black rubber strap, blue rubber strap, or bracelet. Again, the OK getting the glide lock system, while the clasp on the SkyQuest is similar to that featured on the Triumph. Now regarding the Triumph, if you haven't seen my video on that watch, I did an earlier review for the Monta Triumph, I believe in November of last year. So if you'd like to see the packaging that these watches will come in, the Triumph will have very similar packaging as well as the bracelet and clasp featured on that watch, which will be similar to the SkyQuest bracelet, feel free to check out that review. I'll leave a card and maybe a link in the description for you guys. Currently the OK and SkyQuest are on pre-order for $1,000. $1,700 on bracelets, while they'll fall a little under that at 1.5 on the rubber strap option. The SkyQuest being roughly $45 or $50 more than the Ocean King for the added GMT function here. Either one of these two options will come with a travel pouch and a complimentary nylon strap that is in a complimentary color tone to the dial and bezel configuration of your choice and I am holding said nylon strap now. They will come with a custom buckle and keeper system with a sliding secondary keeper. If you guys watch the channel, you know how much I love those. These straps are a little bit on the thicker side, but do pair well with either one of these options. Again, black will come with our black and gilt options. Now choosing one, this is the easier part in my opinion. You either do or don't need a GMT function on your watch. It's great to have in addition to your local time zone, but unless you're tracking multiple time zones and need that feature, I would almost always go with the Ocean King. Um, coupled with the fact that you get an improved clasp on this unit uh, for the same cost, I think that this is a better option for me personally. I also love the steel bezel insert with the wet blue dial. I think it's very unique to the market. I'm not seeing that dial tone amongst any of their competitors. And I think the overall look is great. I see a lot of black and navy blue dive watches all the time. And gilt is on the rise as well. I actually special requested to see the gilt dial options. If you guys remember, my first review on this channel was of a gilt Seiko Turtle. I love gilt dials, but I'm really a fan of the wet blue option on the Ocean King. I think that's personally which model I would choose on the bracelet. I think it's a great option that's very different than what the rest of the market is serving up. And on that note, I'd say Monta's closest competition is Oris. As a matter of fact, when I was at Windup Fair, Oris was the vendor right across the way from them. And it's fitting because they're both high-end, mid-tier luxury brands. Now I've owned three Orises in the past and I have to say that Monta's newest additions with the Ocean King here and the Sky Quest are on par with detailing, level of finishing and craftsmanship, as well as the movement choices and components used in their construction. So I'm pretty sure that the Aquas line, which is very similar to this, features an SW200. I much prefer the footprint of the SW300 and 330 featured in the Sky Quest. As a matter of fact, these are modeled after ETA 2892s and 93 respectively, which are some of my favorite movements from that brand, and it's proven a reliable clone in these watches. They're also regulated in-house to chronometer specs. They're not officially certified, but they have proven extremely accurate in day-to-day -day use for me. And again, these are just the prototypes, but they've done a really good job of getting out a great near production model. Now, of course, I wanna provide you guys with some wrist shots of these two watches and talk you through my time with them while doing so. This isn't the typical review here on the channel. You know I've talked about Monta in the past, but the same is held up with um, the Triumph as it has now. The craftsmanship speaks for itself, you know. it's. They hit the market really aggressively with the Triumph and the original Ocean King series. Um, they're, they're branding themselves as a luxury brand with a luxury price tag. And what's nice is they are living up to that title and that price because, you know, when you pay this much for a watch, you expect something of quality. Uh, these watches are definitely of quality. On that note, this is the Monta Ocean King on my seven and a quarter inch wrist and 
I uh, it immediately elicits a smile from me because I love a good bracelet. This is one of the best bracelets in the game. This is this is one of the finest bracelets I've ever worn. I love the fully articulating links. I've seen it done on other bracelets before, but the execution here, as well as the coupling with the new clasp, is crucial. It's so nice. And mind you, when I reviewed the Triumph, I thought that bracelet was also impeccable, but the addition of this new clasp is really great. So if you're interested in the Ocean King, this is what it's going to look like. It wears extremely well, and it looks fantastic on the wrist, which I'll show you in just a second. And again, here is the Ocean King on a seven and a quarter inch wrist. Again, one of the perks of having a thinner movement is a thinner watch, and I love the smaller footprint on my wrist. Also, they state that it measures about 40.7 millimeters in width, although I'll say that when I was using my electronic measuring device, I got nearer to 40 millimeters, so you can expect it to wear more like a 40 millimeter. Also, if you're looking at this as opposed to your previous uh, Ocean King, the Ocean King before this, uh, this has the added feature of those subtle crown guards, and they look, at first, I didn't like them. I didn't like them in image. I thought they looked a little too subtle, a little too soft with the high polish, but that little touch, that little detail really makes this watch stand out that much more. I really love the punch of high polish on the side next to the crown. I think it looks really great. So here's the Monta SkyQuest on a fitted Monta rubber strap. It's got branding on the tail end as well as branding on the inside. And as you'd expect from the company that also produces Everest straps, these rubber straps are fantastic. If you weren't interested in dishing out the extra $150, $200 for the bracelet, you will not go wrong on one of these rubber straps. Again, best in class, it fits perfectly. The rubber does a good job of keeping that keeper in place. I'll show you in just a second, but normally I would take off the secondary keeper if it was just floating on the tail end like that because you know this much of a lip isn't gonna bother me, but Surprisingly, the keeper has not fallen off in my time and use with this rubber strap. It just, again, looks fantastic with this pairing. Form, function, 10 out of 10. And here is what the SkyQuest will look like on a seven and a quarter inch wrist. When you go to admire it, uh, it's pretty glorious. While we're taking a look at the chassis here, I'd like to point out that slight cutout on the lug ends right there. Now, it's interesting because you know, normally you'd see these swoop down and sort of cut into the wrist. I love that they've featured a small lip here so that no matter how your wrist is articulated, those lug ends don't dig into your wrist. And it's a small thing, it's a small design cue, but it really makes a world of difference in day-to-day -day use. Also, touching on the crown guards again, they're very small and don't bear in on the wrist uh, in case that was a concern of yours. And again, taking a look at the end of this rubber strap, this secondary keeper here, you can see how it's barely hugging that strap down. Again, it hasn't fallen off of the rubber. I'm very impressed with this uh, strap's ability to grip that down. Now, the only negative I can offer about these two watches is that the crown itself is kind of small. It's a little hard to grip and unscrew off the body. I wish the ends of the crowns were flared out just a little bit more so that you can get a better grip on them to access setting the date and time. Other than that, I had no issues with these cases. I think they're designed very, very well. Again, extremely comfortable, extremely gorgeous. Depending on your dial configuration, you're getting a whole lot of watch. Now, before I close out this video, I just want to state how proud I am of these guys. You know, all of their hard work is paying off and the end results really prove it. I'm very grateful that I had a chance to meet Justin and the Monta crew back at Wind Up Fair in November. and. I'm sincerely flattered that they want to continue working with the show and me to produce content for you guys. So again, thank you so much. I'm always happy to see your successes and I'm looking forward to more and more designs and new watches from you guys. You know, let me know when the next watch comes out. I'll be happy to talk about it. Monta is a luxury brand on the rise, giving all of their Swiss competitors a run for their money. And I'm very excited to see what they come out with next. So. Congrats guys on these two newest models. I think they really check out. They're awesome. And I'm excited again to see that new clasp featured on the SkyQuest and Triumph. I had to say it, I know the audience wants it. I know I want it. It's an awesome clasp and an awesome bracelet. It really completes it guys. So good work.
Now, gang, if you found this video enlightening or entertaining in the least, feel free to hit that like button. It looks a little something like this. If you have friends, forums, or groups that were interested in Monta's newest lineup, well, feel free to share this video with them to give them a brief comparison and analysis of these two new watches. Again, there's a lot of similarities, but there are some dissimilarities that you might want to check out before making the move on either one of these watches. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I do content like this twice a week. I'd like to bump that number up, but I'll only know to do so with your support. So feel free to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the content and want to be a member of this community. And also hit the bell icon if you want to see when my videos come out precisely when they air. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette and thank you for the time.